So you're going to be writing all of your data into a lab notebook by hand, and this is actually the superior way to write down your data. The reason why we don't record data in a computer file, for example, is because when you correct something in a digital file, the original information is just gone. It disappears. Whereas if you make a correction in a lab notebook, you cross out the error with a single line and write your correction nearby, and the original information is still there and still readable. So it's a more complete record of what you did, and that's why we take handwritten notes in the sciences. So the question now is, how do you hand this in electronically to your lab instructor, given that it's a handwritten book? Well, what you're going to do is you're either going to scan or photograph each page in your lab book, and then you paste them all into a single document, and then that one document is what you're going to submit to your lab instructor. So if you have a scanner, you're going to scan each page of your book, and most scanning programs have a way to stitch all of those images into one file. So look into how to do that. Alternately, you may be photographing each page of your book. And by the way, if you're going to use a smartphone to photograph the pages of your book, there is a program called Office Lens. It's a free app from Microsoft, and it works on both iPhones and Android devices. And it allows you to take a bunch of photos and put them all into a single PDF. So I have put a separate video on the website made by one of my colleagues that explains how to use Office Lens if you'd like to explore that. If you're not going to be using Office Lens, say for example because you're using a digital camera to photograph your pages, then what you'll need to do is you'll need to take all of these photos, paste them into a Word document, and then that one Word document is what you submit to your lab instructor. So you take a photo of each page of your book, and then you paste all those images into Word. So let me show you how to do that. To paste your photographs into Word, first open up Word, and then open up the folder where you've got all your photographs. Click and drag the photo that you want to put on there first, and it'll appear in the document. Now, if you need to rotate it, click on the page, and you'll notice at the top of the page, there's now this Picture Tools tab. Click on that, and right here, there's an icon that lets you rotate the picture. So I'll rotate it 90 degrees, and then I'll expand it to fill the page. It would be helpful if you did that too. And then if you click down here at the lower corner of the image, you can now insert the next picture. So again, I go to my folder that has the pictures, and then just click and drag the one I want here, and scroll down a little bit, and you'll see that it's now been inserted onto the next page. So again, click the image, click the Picture Tools tab, and then click Rotate. And then I'll stretch it out again, click on the lower corner, and drag my next image in and again, it'll appear on the next page. So you just go through all of your images one by one and insert them each one on a page, rotated correctly and expanded, please, into the document. And when you're done, you save that document and that's what you hand into your lab instructor. So the next thing you wanna do is hand in your work. So on the Moodle website, there should always be a link where you can hand in your notebook file. So you click that link and it takes you to another page. And if you scroll right to the bottom of that, there's a button that says Add Submission. So you click that, and it's going to take you to a page where you can now add your file. So I can drag and drop files into this area. So I'll do that now. So I open up the folder where I've got my file, and do your lab instructor a favor and always make your name the very first part of your file name. So it would always be your name and then a description of what that file is. So then you grab this file, drag it into the drag and drop area, and once it's loaded up, you scroll down a little bit and there's a button that says Save Changes. Now scroll down again and we get back to the same page except it says Draft, Not Submitted, and we now see the file submission here. Now if you decide that you want to change something, down here there's an Edit Submission button, so you can click this and you'll be able to upload a new copy of your file if you want to. And if you're ready to submit it to your lab instructor, you can click Submit Assignment and that'll submit it. Now, once you have submitted the assignment, you won't be able to edit it anymore. So if you decide after that point that you do want to change something, email your lab instructor because they can revert this back to draft status again, and then you will be able to go back and edit the submission. Another thing to be aware of is that if you forget to click the Submit Assignment button, your lab instructor can still pull the draft version of your document off of the website. 
So don't panic if you forgot to click that button. It doesn't mean that your work is late. Your lab instructor still can get to it. But ideally, once you're sure that this is the final version of your document, you click Submit Assignment, and then it's submitted to your lab instructor. And after clicking the Submit button, you come down here and it asks you to confirm. Do you want to submit this work for grading? You click Continue. And again, coming down here to the Submission status, now it says that it's submitted for grading and there's no longer that Edit Submission button anymore. So at this point, it's been submitted to your lab instructor for grading.